Welcome to the Red Cloud Research Roundup, hosted by Red Cloud Financial Services. It is October 3rd. Lithium prices have rallied more than 700% since 2020 and have held steady ever since. To dive into the commodity, Kobe Kushner, mining analyst from the Red Cloud Securities Research Team, is joining us to talk about his recent lithium market update. Direct lithium extraction, what mining investors should know. Kobe, over to you. Thank you for the warm welcome. On today's episode, I'll be discussing lithium. Record high lithium prices have incentivized investment into emerging extraction technologies. I'm talking about direct lithium extraction, or DLE. Several lithium brine resource developers have entered the space, many of which plan to employ this technology to tap into their brines. We put out a report called Direct Lithium Extraction, What Mining Investors Should Know. This report is essentially a guide for investing in these DLE companies, tailored specifically for mining investors. There's a lot to cover here, so I'll try to hit just the big points. At a high level, DLE is a process that allows for recovery of lithium from brines without the need for evaporation methods. The end product is a high purity lithium concentrate, which can then be refined using conventional methods. There's more than one type of DLE. Ion exchange is one of them. This is a process where lithium brine is run through a solid material called a sorbent. The lithium ions are chemically absorbed into the sorbent and swapped for another ion. Ion exchange is not new technology. It's actually the same process that's used in household water softening systems. The difference is the sorbent material. For DLE, the sorbent is a material, usually proprietary, that needs to have a high selectivity for lithium. The sorbent material itself may vary significantly. Each brine chemistry varies, and so each DLE solution should be tailor-made for that specific brine. There's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to DLE. The common question we get is, does DLE work? The answer is not binary. It's not whether it works or does not work. Rather, it's the extent to which a particular DLE solution works for a particular brine. Contrary to popular belief, DLE has already been commercialized. Livent, a major lithium producer, has been using it since the 90s in conjunction with evaporation in Argentina. And there's been at least three DLE operations commercialized in China since 2017. The technology is still emerging and there's still not lots of companies using it commercially. But if it can be successfully scaled up, we think emerging DLE technologies can very much disrupt the global lithium supply chain. To understand why this is, we must first look at the bottlenecks for conventional lithium sources. So with hard rock sources, production rate is generally limited by the geometry of the ore body. With evaporation bronze, the limitation is evaporation rates and evaporation pond footprint size. For DLE operations, scale up could simply be a function of drilling more wells. It doesn't have the same limitations. DLE could also unlock lower grade brines. With evaporation, the process takes months to complete, and even then recoveries are still only around 40%, give or take. So evaporation needs to start off with a high-grade brine, or else the process will just take way too long for the sun to do its work. DLE doesn't have this requirement. There's potential for recoveries of over 90% in a matter of hours. DLE is also more ESG-friendly. No large-scale mining or evaporation ponds are present. We're talking under 5% of the land use requirements here for DLE. A key point we want to make, when it comes to DLE projects, grade is not king. Mining investors especially need to wrap their heads around this concept, as mining investors are used to higher grade resources translating to better margins. But with liquid resources, there's a lot more at play. Investors should focus more on deliverability. What kind of flow rates are possible for each well? Consider two hypothetical projects, Project A and Project B. B has double the grade, but a sixth of the flow rate per well. That means Project B requires three times the number of wells. At $3 million a well, this can easily blow at your capex and kill the project, and will also inflate your opex because it costs more to operate three times the number of wells. Bottom line is that grade does not necessarily translate to better margins. The conclusion is that picking winners in the DLE space is tough, it's difficult to assess deliverability, and it's also difficult to assess DLE technology, especially because companies like to keep their technology proprietary. Ultimately, we think the winners will be the first movers, companies that can rapidly de-risk the technology, commercialize their brines, and lock in supply contracts while prices are still high. 
When in doubt, go with proven management teams. We particularly view oil and gas experience as favorable. Oil and gas operators tend to understand the concept of deliverability and know how to optimize production of liquid resources. We recommend investors who want exposure to this type of disruption to buy into a basket of companies instead of just one. One company we touch on in our report is Celios X Lithium and Technologies. That's HX on the venture. We initiated coverage with a spec buy rating and no target price. This is a company with almost 600,000 acres of brine rights across the Americas. All projects are either in lithium producing regions, such as Argentina and Nevada, or emerging lithium hubs like Alberta. In Argentina, the company is advancing its Goyotoyoc project. This project is jointly owned by Helios X and Plus Patrol, a leading Argentinian oil and gas producer. Of all prospective solars in Argentina, Goyotoyoc is the closest to natural gas and electrical power. Helios X also owns 100% of the Alkali Spring and Teals Marsh projects in Nevada. Both are near Albemarle Silver Peak Lithium Brine Operation, the USA's only source of domestic lithium production. It also has the Fox Creek project in Alberta's oil fields, where infrastructure is vast, thanks to the oil and gas sector. I mentioned earlier that DLE is not a one-size-fits-all solution, and Helios X understands this concept. For each project, it engaged with a different DLE provider. It has engagements in place with Lilac Solutions, Lightus Energy, and Coke Separation. It's currently a pre-resource company, and to no surprise, pre-resource companies trade a lot cheaper than resource stage companies. That being said, we have conviction that Helios X has resource potential. The maiden resource is planned at Goyotoyoc in Argentina. There's really two Solars here. The Southern Solars returned several high-grade samples, including samples above 1,000 ppm lithium, well above typical economic cutoff. Another operator has already defined a resource in the same Solar that Helios X is targeting. We also think there's resource potential in Alberta, the Fox Creek area is surrounded by known lithium brine occurrences and has the largest concentration of high lithium formation water values in the entire province. Other companies have delineated major lithium resources within the Leduc Reservoir. By our count, there's nearly 50 million tons of LCE in Alberta's Leduc delineated thus far. And this is, a, this is the same reservoir that Helios X is targeting at Fox Creek. A key differentiator with Helios X is that it has optionality. It's the only one of its peers with lithium brine exposure in more than two countries. As well, if DLE does not work out for Helios, the company still has evaporation to fall back on. Especially in Argentina, the solar is located in a hot, arid climate, and brine chemistry has relatively low impurity levels. Management has already run the economics on an evaporation brine operation here, and the results are encouraging. Speaking of management, we are big fans. CEO Christopher Brown is a reservoir engineer by trade. He came from the oil and gas sector. He actually created one of the largest tailings operating companies in Alberta. He knows how to commercialize and has real operational experience. Catalysts for the story include a maiden resource in Argentina, expected by year end. Next year, the company is looking to drill across all of its projects and potentially put out a maiden resource at Fox Creek. Concurrently, Helios X is planning a DLE demonstration plant in Alberta and a pilot plant for Goyotoyoc in Argentina. Overall, we think Helios X is a high quality story, good assets, good management, unique optionality, quality partnerships in place, and an opportunity to get in before the maiden resource hits. Thanks for listening to the Red Cloud Research Roundup podcast. We hope you enjoyed the dive into recent notable mining news. Remember, you can join us every Monday for new episodes. And as always, you can head over to redcloudsecurities.com for full disclosures and to sign up to our email list. That's it for this episode and see you next time.